Hello, I'm Shirley Ann Bruno and welcome to Access Spotlight, a public access TV series which interviews local residents because of their accomplishments and service to the community. Today, my guest certainly fulfills the criteria. He is a local resident and also the controller for Nassau County. Welcome, Mr. Thank you, Shirley. Good morning. Welcome to PATV. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Let's start at the beginning. In uh, 2009, well, not very beginning, but recently, you were elected controller. Prior to that, um, were you in politics? No, I was in private industry for uh, over 35 years. I've had my own company in the last 20 years. So why did you decide to change? Accidental. Accidental. Really? I was asked to run. Nobody expected me to win. Uh, but uh, that is a reflection uh, of the story of my life. Uh, give me a challenge and I will achieve the results. I will overcome. Tell me a little bit about your background. Like what brought you out here to Nassau County? Well, I was born in Greece. Mm -hmm. Come from a very uh, poor family. We moved to Canada uh, to uh, escape poverty. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we're an immigrant, uh, maybe a refugee <laughs> in, a, in a way. Uh, but I grew up in Canada. I got a terrific education. I went to McGill. I was yes. high school valedictorian. Oh, uh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> mm. So if you can imagine uh, you know, emigrating when I was eight and eight years later becoming Great. high school valedictorian. Then I went to one of the top uh, colleges, uh, universities in Canada, McGill University. Yes. I got school. a bachelor's in electrical en engineering degree and started working for the Bell System, which was kind of the premier uh, company in the world then. Yes. Um, yes. It was similar to what Apple and Google and Facebook all combined is, uh, is, is today. Uh, so I was a little smarty. <laughs> Good. We need smart okay. people. Uh, um, then in 78, we, we moved to the, to the States. I was recruited uh, by Booz Allen and Hamilton, one of the, uh, the big uh, management yes. consulting firms uh, working in New York. They were starting their IT practice. Uh, then I got an MBA in finance and moved into banking and uh, <laughs> rose um, to a Chase Manhattan Bank to the vice president, moved on to Citibank as vice president, and then started my own company in financial information services. Believe it or not, competing with Bloomberg. I'm not oh, a well. Bloomberg. I'm not a Bloomberg. <laughs> okay. Exciting. So it's been uh, exciting. Um, and um, I've had um, a terrific career. I feel that I haven't worked a day in my life because I've always enjoyed what I was doing. And I still do being in public <laughs> service. That's amazing. Not many people can say that. But certainly your background is very varied, challenging, and exciting. It has been, and I'm grateful. And you have how many children? I have two boys. They're both married. Oh, nice. And we have two grandkids. Oh, and the ex best, right? expecting a third. <gasps> oh, exciting. Coming in March. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. So um, you're in your second term now as controller. Um, the county has about 1.5 million people. Yes. What's the budget for the county? It's about $3 billion. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And yet they say that this is... And that doesn't include the, the schools. As you know, the schools are separate. Oh. Uh, so the schools account for another $5 billion. Amazing. So in total, uh, although we're not responsible for the schools, in terms of the total tax base, it's about eight billion. Yeah. Well, we are a county that has a very high median income mm -hmm. and very expensive nationwide to live in. So that's that's difficult. Um, your office and as the county controller, what are your responsibilities for the county? Well, the, the controller's office is similar to or equivalent to to the chief financial officer mm -hmm. uh, of a mm -hmm. large organization, you know, a, a, except the, that it's independently elected and it provides a check and balance to both the county executive and the legislature. So it's very different in, in that regard. I'm accountable only to the residents, okay. which is a very, very important distinction. Really? Interesting. Okay. Um, what do you think some of the challenges are that Nassau County residents face? Well, the challenges in government are similar to those of any uh, average family that we have to make ends meet. Right. Uh, without, uh, in, the, in this case, asking uh, our people for more and more 
uh, revenues in terms of taxes. Uh, because although we're very, a very wealthy county, not everybody is wealthy in, the, in, the, in our county. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially the seniors, are on very low income or fixed income and are having a very hard time making ends meet. So um, as a controller, what is your um, view, the areas that you really, besides um, helping people make ends meet and worried about that, what is, what is the biggest issue for your office right well, the, now? We have a number of functions, the controller's office. Uh, one of them is to uh, oversee the budget and, and okay. ensure that the various departments stay within their budget that has been approved uh, by the, the legislature. Uh, then we have an audit responsibility, an audit function to go out and audit the various agencies of government to ensure that they are operating mm -hmm. as efficiently sure. uh, as possible. Uh, we process the payroll, uh, we pay the bills, so we, we control the checkbook. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, you know, as most uh, uh, people know, the person who controls the checkbook has all the power. So we, we don't write checks and we don't pay bills unless uh, we are convinced that the work has been done um, satisfactorily and we've received value. Okay. And we're very, I'm very proud of you know, the, the controller's office and we have truly uh, some phenomenal experts that are non-political. Okay. How has the needs of the county changed since you took the office of controller? They have changed dramatically um, in, in a couple of very significant ways. The, our minority population has increased mm -hmm. significantly. I think it's gone up, it's now approaching 40% of our county. Wow. And the needs of the minority uh, population is obviously much greater than those that are uh, more well off. So mm -hmm. our social service costs uh, have gone up substantially. Our Medicaid costs mm -hmm. uh, have gone up uh, substantially. Uh, well, our revenue uh, has kind of remained flat. A and of course, uh, um, personnel expenses, salaries uh, mm -hmm. have also been, go been mm -hmm. going up at a rate of three or four, or, or four percent. So we've had a disconnect uh, there. Uh, our expenses have been growing uh, well above the rate of inflation while our revenues have been flat. And we've seen a shift also in our revenues. Uh, our biggest source of revenue has been, and it continues to be, sales tax revenues. Yes. Uh, but as we've, had, we've seen the shift to online shopping and out of state shopping, uh, oh. we've seen the growth that we've had in the past uh, has been reduced very substantially, and that has crimped our revenues. So, what are your possible solutions for doing, you know, making this better? Well, the obvious solution is, uh, well, first the solution is not to raise property taxes okay. because people can't afford to pay more. Seniors cannot afford to pay more. Actually, we need to reduce property taxes, okay. not, not, not raise them to, mm -hmm. to help our people stay in, in, in their homes. We have to make government much more efficient. Take out the corruption that exists, take, take out the waste, you know, and mismanagement. And my estimation is that there's about 300 million of waste and, and uh, mismanagement in mm -hmm. government, as it is in any government. Yeah, but it takes okay. a business person to go in and say, look, we need to make fundamental changes. We need to, to cut down on the, on the patronage, uh, pay to play, and uh, work for the taxpayers. And if, you, if we do that, then I think we can take out $300 million in savings that we should use either to lower the property taxes or to invest in infra infrastructure. So your business background really comes in. Oh, absolutely. When yes, it, it does. Because yes, you it had does. to do that. In you your have own to have business. that experience, that insight, uh, having run large organizations, to know mm -hmm. how to bring professionals in, work with professionals, and and hold department heads accountable. Okay, let's talk about the tax department. Not everybody's favorite uh, subject. What are the two areas regarding taxes that your office tries to educate the homeowner? Well, we've, um, we're talking about the tax assessment that uh, mm -hmm. kind of is the, is the baseline that determines everybody's relative taxes. Right. Uh, we had done an audit about uh, four years ago of the tax department, the tax assessment department, mm -hmm. that we said it was uh, broken, mm -hmm. uh, it was unfair, right. uh, and um, uh, to most of the residents in, in Nassau County. And we made a number of recommendations to fix it. Uh, none of those were taken, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. 
Uh, and so we have a situation where the, uh, the assessment de department is, is broken, continues to be broken, and grossly unfair mm -hmm. to our estimation about 60% of our residents that do not file tax grievances. Wow. And, and, and that's unfair, and that's the, the message that I want to send out, that everybody, every person uh, uh, who owns real estate, whether it be commercial or residential, oh, really? should file a, a, a grievance, an appeal. And it doesn't matter if they think, a lot of people are deceived that they get the assessment notice at the beginning of the year, right. and they think that the assessment usually is significantly less than the market, what they think is the market value of the, their house. Of their property, yeah. And they feel that they don't have to do anything. Right. But because the, you know, uh, the, all the properties are, are underassessed, and those people that grieve because they see that their neighbor's house is lower, is assessed lower than, than theirs, they will get the benefit and the tax burden will shift to the person that did not file an appeal or a grievance. Okay, this is, can be complicated. It is a little complex. And so how does your office help people to figure this out? Well, uh, we've, we've all, all, you know, for the past uh, six years that I've been in the control, or seven years now, I've been encouraging people to file appeals. Mm -hmm. uh, through press releases, uh, press conferences. What we've decided to do this year is do something novel and different because everybody's online now. Yeah. So we created a, a video right. that provides uh, simple step-by-step -step instructions to residents to file an appeal for their uh, tax assessment. Okay. And I encourage everybody to do so, irrespective of whether they feel that their assessment is reasonable or significantly lower than their, uh, their market value of their, of their home. Okay, this so way they can be treated equally. And they can do it themselves. It's very simple. Uh, okay. They can do it themselves. Okay. Uh, this video that I encourage them to go to the county controller's website. You know, I've seen it on the website. I've seen it on YouTube. Okay. And we will be playing it here at Public Access TV also. That will be a tremendous public service. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a good thing because mm -hmm. you can stop it, listen, go back, you know, all of that. Yes. I know there are companies that will tell you they'll do that for you, but y you think that each individual homeowner should try to do it themselves. Oh, uh, absolutely. Because, you know, they, they inevitably if they hire, uh, you know, an outside representative to do it, they may find that you know they may not get a tax uh, reduction even though their assessment has come down mm -hmm. uh, but they will have to pay a fee you oh. know and that's it, it's strange and, and people get very upset and, and feel that they've been defrauded yes uh, because they haven't gotten the benefit but now they have to pay a fee okay uh, on something that they can do themselves what is the other tax issue that homeowners need to know that they can apply for the simple one. Or the star <laughs> exemption. The star exemption. Yeah. Explain. Well, that's, they can have an automatic benefit. If they make less than $500,000, okay. which I think is most of our people. Yes. There's a few that make uh, a lot more, and they don't need any help. Right. They don't need about $750 <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in, a, in mm -hmm. reduction. But uh, most people that do make less than $500,000 annually can apply for a star exemption, which gives them about you know, f $750. Uh, to apply, and all they have to do is apply once, and mm -hmm. then it automatically renews year, the, year after year. They have that uh, benefit. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has not applied, who, had, who mm -hmm. does not receive the star exemption, they should immediately do so. Now it's a little too late for this year, right. but they should definitely apply before uh, the end of 2017. Right. Uh, it's critically important. It's like a free gift. And it comes to your house. And it comes to your house. <laughs> <laughs> when I moved recently, now, if you're it was mailed to my house. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're a senior, mm -hmm. then you can uh, apply a senior above 65. Mm -hmm. There's enhanced star that you should be aware of. Oh. Okay, to get a little more money or benefit. So there are things that you are trying to have help seniors to stay in the county. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We, do, we have a uh, very strong outreach program. Uh, we have uh, people that go out to the communities and to senior centers, you know, to talk to them about the opportunities that uh, maybe they're missing out on. So if they're not on uh, the computer necessarily by 
by public access, showing it, they're watching television, we're a free channel, <laughs> and um, also for your staff to go out and help people Absolutely. with this. Or they can call us if they feel frustrated. Let's say they find, we've tried to make the video as simple as possible, but right. if they feel, if they've tried and they're frustrated, please call our office and, and we'll try to it help It was you. very good. The, the videos are excellent. You mm -hmm. know, I watched them, I understood them, it was great. But yes, and we're going to do that during this program. We're going to give the website and your email, uh, the controller's office, mm -hmm. and also the phone number for people to call. That'll be great. Because it's good for people. Sometimes mm -hmm. they just want to pick up the phone. Sometimes it's a little faster uh, than mm -hmm. trying to navigate through the computer. At least I have found that in certain things. Um, because I re recently read that there was a man scamming about 1,500 homeowners um, charging them uh, allegedly, because I don't think this he was gone to trial, uh, to obtain property tax exemptions they could have obtained for free. So people have to be careful. They have to be very careful, correct. Uh, they can do it themselves. Uh, there are scams out there with regards to the star exemptions. Mm. Like I said, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you may get uh, letters in asking you to pay them a small fee to file for you. You don't have to file every year. Once you file once, yes. it re automatically yes. renews. So don't fall to that uh, for that scam. Uh, the other scam that has been going on is, uh, is you may get letters from California, believe it or not, wow. uh, that they can get a copy of the deed to your property for $90. Oh, you can no. get that same deed if you want a copy for $10 by just calling yeah. up uh, uh, the clerk's office. So maybe that's the message that we definitely have to restate again here. Mm -hmm. If somebody approaches you, go to your website, make that phone call, start at the official controller's office website. Uh, absolutely. Don't write a check to anybody unless right. you're, dev you're sure of who you're yeah. writing it to. Yeah. But if you can do these things, on, you give it a try yourself. Absolutely. And you're willing to help. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2014, your office started using social media via Facebook, everybody's Facebook, in a very innovative way. Um, can you describe what your office posts were on Facebook? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it seems strange now that uh, the two years or three years later uh, that... Uh, we talk about wanting government transparency and, mm -hmm. there, and yet there was very little government transparency. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put all the contracts online on Facebook Amazing. and all the checks, all the bills that we were paying, yeah. uh, we put them on, um, on, on Facebook, on our website, easily downloadable in Excel format. So people that uh, wanted to know where their money was being spent, if they would spend a few minutes, they could easily right. Uh, determine. And that also saved the, the, the county and the controller's office a lot of effort because it certainly the press was foiling to get that information. And you put it out there. And we put it out there so they don't call us anymore. It was very innovative in 2014. Uh, yes, it was. The Actually, we got national awards for, yeah. for, for, for that endeavor. And it's simple. And it's simple. Yes. But that's if you believe in transparency. Not all offices, uh, they're okay. nervous about it. <laughs> um, okay. You switched political parties about four months ago. Yes, I did. And basic question, why did you change parties? You are now a Democrat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I found first and foremost that you know, the, my Republican Party was not inclusive of our community, mm -hmm. sad to say. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and that uh, was un unacceptable to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was being criticized for campaigning in minority communities. That wasn't right. Um, I also uh, found that I was at odds with some of the, the, the values of, you know, the, the Republican. I was a big supporter of raising the minimum wage, for example. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I tried to convince him that, uh, you know, there's been this argument since the minimum wage was 3.25 an hour, uh, that uh, raising the minimum wage would destroy jobs. It never did. Uh, you know, our living wage in the county now is over fifteen fifteen dollars, mm -hmm. and our unemployment rate is less than four percent. It's we have more than full employment. Yes. But the problem with you know with uh, our uh, you know with our jobs market is that we're not creating enough high paying jobs so that people can afford to live here, and we have to focus and, and work on that. 
So we're trying to get business, more business to come. More business to our and, and create a new economy, an innovation economy mm -hmm. that will be exciting and, and create those high paying jobs that our young people would want to, to, to stay and, and work here. Well, one thing that we've noticed, especially mm -hmm. here in this studio, because it's all around us, is the increase in the hospitals and the medical care. And, and I think you're very interested in that, bringing that to this county. Oh, yes, I am. But to do it in, in a way that will, uh, first of all, the healthcare industry is our big, uh, biggest employer in Nassau County. They are. So how can we make it better? Right. How can you know, we uh, make it w world leaders in, in health care? How do we make it so that this is where people want to come to get the best treatments uh, or the next generation of miracle drugs and, and medicines will, will mm -hmm. be found? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what excites me to stay in government to, to help that happen. Yes. We need to, to develop a vision, refine the vision, and then start investing to make it a reality. Well, and it's certainly happening here. We have Northwell and um, Mount Sinai practices, and Winthrop, I believe, just became part of Mount Sinai. Right. So it is exciting, and there is the best medical care here in Nassau County. Right, but we have to make it better. And, and how would and we do that? Well, I think we need, we need to invest in research and development, yeah. bring some of the best minds in the world to seed this innovation economy around, around health care. Uh, and the models have been done elsewhere. They've been done up in Boston with the biotech industry, right. in San Diego, similar with biotech and healthcare mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. uh, Silicon Valley, which is you know, the IT right. hub. Right. Uh, those are all uh, hubs of innovation and, 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 and development that are driving our economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have that type of vibrant, uh, innovative economy right here in Nassau County, and we can do it. Yeah, what I hear as we're talking is your strong background in business, which really comes to play in the controller's office, not just a political job. This for you is something that you have ingrained uh, being yeah, in yes, business. I, yes, I do, and you know, and this is my way of giving back to the yeah. community. That's and I, I excite, uh, you know, I'm excited to do new, new things and make things better. If you could change one thing right now about the county, what would it be? Um, the change would be to, to restore trust in government. I think it's terribly lacking right now with regards to what has gone on. So we need to you know, restore trust by stripping out corruption, uh, by making government more efficient. But only people you know, with that unquestionable integrity can, can, can do that. Uh, and I think it's important at the next election that people get engaged in, in, in the election process, make sure you know, that they uh, look up and you know, each of the candidates do their homework and yes. find the best person that they feel uh, will have the integrity and the experience to represent and serve them. Well, I think that's very true and I think many people today are starting to realize how important the local elections are. Not they, just the national ones and even the statewide, which are important for us mm -hmm. always, but the local elections are very important. It's got to start on, it has to be there on all levels. Oh, ab absolutely. So, it's, it's critically important. That's know, where they pay their, ta their property tax bills. What about the sales tax in Nassau County? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is high. Yeah. No, actually it's a quarter less than New York City. Okay. How's that? You didn't know that. I didn't know <laughs> that. It's a quarter less. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Okay. So we, we invite you to go shop here, shop, shop locally. Yeah, I do. And <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. Thank you. Um, so I would just like to thank you for coming. It sure, went so thank quickly you. It was the a time, pleasure. Right? There's so much more we could talk about. Will mm -hmm. you come back again? I'd love to. Oh, that's great. So again, um, it's a pleasure always to meet someone who is a neighbor and also uh, in government. And I would like to thank our viewers um, for joining us today watch, to watch Access Spotlight. Public Access TV brings you programs like this and needs your support. Uh, we get our, our support right now from individuals in our community and also cable franchise fees. So why don't you check out our website, get involved, create programs, and certainly tune in and you will see the information about the tax 
the different things that you can do with your tax exemptions. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.